Good morning. Welcome back into Wake Up America. I'm Rob Finnerty. That massive caravan of immigrants making its way through Mexico to our southern border continues today unabated. The Mexican government doing nothing to stop this or prevent this. Uh, this all happening while the Summit of the Americas kicks off this weekend in Los Angeles, notably without the president of Mexico. For more, let's welcome in Newsmax border correspondent Jason Jones. Jason, good morning. Good to see you. Rob, good morning to you. It's good to be with you this morning. You know, when we talk about these caravans coming, this one specifically now has between 10 and 15,000 people. And that number will grow now that they have left Papa Chula heading for Mexico City. When they get to Mexico City, that's the major tripwire to watch for. You got to ask yourself why, because this is where the group will start to break up. They're going to be using what is known as the Ant Trail or the Hormega, or most likely the Mexican government, as a, like we've seen in the past multiple times. Because this thing's getting so much press in the middle of the night, they'll bring in different buses, and then the Mexican government will bus them up to different cities along their northern borders so that these folks can cross. In addition to that, though, the alien smuggling organizations will put them on what we call the underground Uber, where they start daisy chaining them up to the border. And then, of course, you know, they're going to get on La Bestia, which is the different train system that allows them to go across that border. And it'll spread those numbers out quite a bit. But let me tell you what should concern you not just this caravan. Remember, those people are allowed to come to this country under DHS's requirements and Secretary Mayorkas's. So they're going to be allowed to stay here on a humanitarian parole or a, what is known as a notice to appear. And those folks in that caravan are from all over the world. But let me show you what really concerns me. Listen to Sheriff Shelton 80 miles into the United States and what is happening to citizens in this country, not just on the border, but far in the country. Can you tell me how your community... 80 miles from the border is being impacted. We are having uh, pursuits of stolen vehicles almost daily. If they can't outrun us, they'll punch through a fence and at least one. And a lot of times if they, they keep going and they'll punch through seven or eight fences on these um, of our landowners. And I have one landowner that had his fences punched through and torn down 34 times in 60 days this year. I did that interview last Friday, Rob, the day before that small community in McMullen County had three pursuits in just one day. And one, I met with 14 different ranchers as well. They are the forgotten Americans who have been abandoned by the federal government. Remember, they're not on the border. They're 80 miles in the United States. One rancher alone had spent over $100,000 in 15 months trying to repair fences. My this goodness. is where we are. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, all right, Jason Jones, thanks so much for the update. We appreciate it. We'll do it again soon. Again, uh, as Jason just mentioned, thousands of immigrants making their way to the southern border as the Summit of the Americas gets ready to start in Los Angeles with a huge snub from the Mexican president. So where is border czar Kamala Harris? Well, she's launching a $50 million initiative to combat what she claims are the root causes of immigration without any specifics as the crisis goes on and on. Here to discuss that is Texas Congressman and Air Force veteran Pat Fallon. Uh, Congressman, great to have you back on. Just your take on the fact that we're holding this, this Summit of the Americas in Los Angeles, big moment for the administration, and the president of Mexico is not showing up. Well, you know, President Obergon had, had already blamed Joe Biden for the crisis over the last year and a half. And Rob, what a lot of viewers may not know is the worst month we have ever had with illegal border crossings was this past April, which is the last month we have data for, which was 234,000, which was 1,268% worse than the last April where President Trump was in office. So the border is not a crisis, it's a catastrophe. Joe Biden has punted on it. He has done nothing to uh, listen to our Border Patrol agents who know best as to how to secure the border. And this is all just a dog and pony show. Uh, that the administration is, uh, is is rolling out for the media. Congressman, you're in Texas. Um, Beto O'Rourke is looking for the uh, Democratic nomination to run against Greg Abbott for governor. Uh, a day ago, Beto O'Rourke said that the border is, quote, great. Take a listen. And we all agree that we want the border to be better. In fact, I think the border is pretty great right now. If this is great, what, what's the opposite? What, how is he doing down there? What's his popularity like in the state of Texas right now? Well, Beto O'Rourke, honestly, Rob, because we talk about, we, and on your show, we go beyond honesty. We go to frankness and candor. Beto O'Rourke is a clown. He was very good at skateboarding through parking lots and playing the air drums and drive throughs and that's about it. And he's very good at losing elections, of which, he, by the way, will do again in November. I'm predicting a hot take here. It'll be a double-digit defeat. 
and maybe finally we heard the last of them. How can the hell can you say that the border is quote unquote great when we've had 160 foreign, 160 nations represented in four nationals crossing it illegally? Right. That we've had almost two and a half million, actually over two and a half million illegal border crossings under this administration. It is uh, and fentanyl, by the way, fentanyl, cocaine, and methamphetamine, uh, Ill illegal narcotics crossing the border, record highs, and we've lost 100,000 Americans to that. So for him to say that is a dereliction of duty, except he's not in office. So he's just being, again, an absolute clown. He's a farce. Uh, many on the right applauded Matthew McConaughey's comments in the White House briefing room yesterday. Uh, interesting comments. There were rumors that he was going to run for governor in Texas. I know that the House Committee on Oversight and Reform is going to hold a very important hearing today on gun violence with testimony from survivors and victims. Um, Peggy Noonan in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend called what we saw in Uvalde, Texas, the biggest law enforcement scandal since George George Floyd. Um, how does that impact the details of this story? The fact that the Uvalde police waited for so long before going into that classroom. Um, how does that impact this whole debate? Well, you know, there's several things we can do to actually keep our children safe and, and harden our schools. And, and we can talk about that, uh, you know, for an hour on, on your show. But one of the things is we need to change the police doctrine. Uh, we have to change it more to a military type where, where you advance and eliminate. You have to advance and eliminate the threat. 13 years ago, Rob, I was on a city council and we had a safer program where the city and the school district got together and wired every single classroom, every hallway, every stitch of every school. So they knew exactly if there was a threat, exactly where it would be. And, you know, they could go in there and, again, take it out. We can't go into a siege mentality where you surround a school. I mean, children died, unfortunately, because there wasn't effective leadership in law enforcement on site. Now, it's Absolutely. dangerous and it's scary, and you might have to give your life up to do so, but we've got to protect our babies. I, I, I'll read it again. This is from that same Peggy Noonan article, Wall Street Journal, quote, it was their job to go in. If you can't cut it, then don't join the force. Don't get the badge. Don't get the pension. Um, it says it all right there. These police officers, and, and we're absolutely behind the police, but it, it does seem like errors were made in Uvalde, Texas. We'll all be watching that uh, Second Amendment Oversight Committee hearing today. Congressman, good to see you. Thank you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.